to my lovely year 12 class um i'm sorry for missing out on teaching you on friday and unfortunately i'm not well enough to teach you tomorrow either as one of the teachers suggested it wouldn't be wise to come in and risk um, getting one of you or some of you sick just as you're preparing for your hsc but at the same time we really can't afford to miss a couple of maths lessons either so i'm hoping um i can record the lessons and it's not going to be an amazing recording hopefully i won't make too many mistakes and um that way i can we can still do the work or i can give you the explanation of the content and you can get on with the work so that the two lessons aren't an absolute waste I'm sort of going to um, restart what we did uh, on Thursday, but um, hopefully explain it a little bit better because Thursday was also a bit of a mess with um, me getting to class a little bit late and having to leave early. So we're talking about binomial probability and we're going to start with an example. So the example we were looking at on Thursday was the situation of um, a game involving a dice and to win the game you need to roll a six um, otherwise you lose and we want to draw a probability tree that shows all possible outcomes if we were to roll uh, have four rounds of this game now the question says let p be the probability of success and q the probability of failure um, this is something that I think I stressed on Thursday, but maybe it wasn't clear enough. For binomial probability to be applicable, we really are looking at situations where it's two, there's two possible outcomes only. So that's in this case, <clears throat> it's either a six, uh, as in a win or a, lo um, or a lo loss, um, which is a not six. So one to five. Now, so we want two possible outcomes. Um, so we've, we've dealt with situations like this before in two unit maths probability we have, but no one's ever talked about looking at it from a binomial and we're going to see the link. Um, so let's draw the tree. Um, we'll have our first, just enlarge this so I can write better. Okay. Second, third, and fourth toss. Okay, so here's a tree I prepared earlier, sort of. Um, so you, on the first, Roll, roll of the dice. So first game, we either win or lose. The probability of win is one out of six and the probability of loss is five out of six. But the question suggested to call P the probability of um, likelihood of winning. So that one out of six, we're going to call P and the five out of six, we're going to call Q. And the same thing happens here and so on. Now, the really important thing here is apart from the fact that there's only two possible outcomes at each level, these probabilities aren't changing either. And that's essential because if the probabilities were changing, then binomial would not work. It doesn't mean you can't answer a probability question we have other methods of doing it and we learn them in two unit but um, binomial applies for situations where the probability doesn't change from stage to stage of the event so looking at all possible outcomes the first is all wins the next one is three wins and a loss the next one is another three win and a loss, but the loss in a is in a different spot. 
then two wins and two losses win loss win win and so on all right so there the total possible options now if i was to look at all the different scenarios then the number of ways that we can have all four games winning there's only one of those um, what about three wins and a loss well there's one here there's another one there there's another one there that's three that's four and that's it so that's all win this one is three win let's look at two win one two three four five six and you find for one win you're going to end up with four and for zero win that means all four games lost there's only one possible way to end the bottom now that's one four six four one that's awfully like our binomial coefficients so the first one would be four choose zero four choose um actually you know what maybe not four choose zero it's more the case of four choose four if success is winning four choose three four choose two four choose one four choose zero so from four games we choose four wins from four games we choose three wins from four games we choose two wins from four games we choose one win and from four games we choose zero wins so that's starting to make sense um, the coefficients and the number of times it occurs in the table the next thing is the actual probability so if the question asks for probability of four wins then probability of four wins would be multiplying p by p by p by p that's p to the four and it happens only once so that was four choose four p to the four but if the question asks for probability of one win well probability of one win would be so we want a loss another loss another loss and a single win now do i care what order not really we just want to have the know the probability of at least two of winning exactly one doesn't matter where that win happens so that would be one p p to the one the other was we had three q's so that's q cubed and we know that's going to happen for one win for choose one so you can see how we can use our binomial expansion and notation to get our probabilities now one interesting thing is that if i add all these probabilities they add up to one so that's four choose zero p to the zero q to the four plus four choose one p to the one q, and so on that equals to 1 but that's also equal to p plus q to the power of 4 
and since p is 1 over 6 and q is 5 over 6 oops, 5 over 6 to the power of 4 that's going to be 1 to the power of 4 so par uh, in terms of probability wise and number wise it all works out as well all right so that's the basis of the idea of binomial and um, how it relates to probability so let's have a look at an example for a certain species of bird there is a chance of three in five that the fledgling will survive its first month of month after birth from a brood of 10 fledglings what is the probability that none will survive so let's break down the question certain species of bird there is a chance of three in five of survival in the first month now we're looking at total of 10 and we want to know none will survive so let's see if it meets all the requirements first of all what are is it more, uh, more than two outcomes or exactly two well we can see there is success and failure success is survival and failure is non-survival so p being our success is three on five and q being our failure of not surviving is two on five now the next thing is does the probability change well if one bird doesn't survive the fledgling doesn't survive the other fledgling doesn't know any different so just because one doesn't survive it doesn't change the probability of the next one surviving or not surviving so it meets our second test as well so how do we want it? We want non-surviving. So we want failure. We want the rate of failure for all 10. So probability of no non-surviving would be 4 choose 0, p to the 0, q, not 4, sorry, 10. P to the 0, Q to the 10. That means every single one, all 10, are going to die. So that's 10 to 0 is 1. P to the 0 is 1. So that's 2 to the 2 over 5 to the power of 10. Now, you don't need binomial to be able to answer that. But it's just a nice, simple way of starting this topic. More than one will survive. Okay, so this means more than one. What does it mean? It means two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. And in between, they're all, they are all or. A faster way of doing that, probability of greater than one surviving we know is the same as one minus probability of less than or equal to one surviving so that would be one minus probability of none surviving we've already worked out two on five the power of 10 probability of one surviving well from 10 we're choosing one p is our rate of survival which we want one of those and nine of the others so one minus two on five ten plus ten choose one is ten 
P is three fifth and Q is two fifth. And you calculate that to work out your probability. And <coughs> excuse me, in most of these cases, the probabilities end up being um, decimals and you can give your decimal um, to three or four decimal places depending on what the question asks. Now I haven't worked out um, the answer to these so I'll leave that for you to do. Okay so here's our next example. Notice it says sample with replacement. Um, from a small population. That's very important. If you have a small population and you take a member of the population out, like, I don't know, a bag of marbles, identical marbles, and I take one out, with 10 marbles in it, and I take one out, um, if I don't replace it, then the probability of the next um, item will change. So when we're doing binomial and we're working with small population, we need our samples uh, to have replacement, otherwise binomial doesn't work. Okay, I'll give you a chance to read the question and then I'll go through the answer. Okay, so again, let's go through the problem and highlight the important bits. First of all, we have 15 mobile phones in the bag and five are defective. A phone is sampled by being taken from the box. So that sentence is sort of defining what they mean by Sample. The process of sampling is by taking a phone from the box, examined and put back into the box. This process is repeated until four sampling have been made. Four. So this process happens four times. What's the probability that at least one defective phone is being sampled? All right. All right. Let's first define some things. We need to define what success and what's failure. Now it's up to you. I would rather refer to success as not faulty and failure being faulty. So with being defective. So, um, but that doesn't have to be the case. The question's asking about defective and if that's what you want to achieve, you want to find a defective phone, then you could perceive success to be finding a defective form. So I'm going to define success as, well, let's do it that way because that's the outcome of the question. Success as defective form and failure as non-defective. Now, some might say, does this really matter? Well, it does make a difference if the probabilities of defective and non-defective um, are different. So since 5 out of 15 are defective, P is one third and Q, non-defective, is two thirds. So at least one defective means one defective or two defective or three or four so i could go and find those four or i could do one minus probability of greater than or equal to one defective is the same as one minus probability of no defective. So from four choose 
I want no defective P zero Q four one minus one times one times two and three to the power of four. The next one says not more than two defective phones being sampled. Not more than two. What does that mean? Zero is not more than two. One is not more than two. Two is not more than two. It's equal to two, but it's not more than two. So we're looking at zero, one, or two. So I'm actually going to do that probability of not more than two is the same as less than or equal to two defective. So that's four choose zero P zero Q to the four plus four choose one P is uh, P to the 1, Q to the 4, plus 4, choose 2, P to the 2, Q, and I think I made a mistake there, that shouldn't say 4, it should say 3, substituting our Numeral scene Q is two thirds four one third two thirds Q six one third squared two thirds squared. And you calculate that and you've got the probability. So you can see the process is quite easy, straightforward once you get your head around um, the steps involved. Getting this bit right, understanding not more than at least one, what those things mean and really having a clear idea of what you're going to set your success and failure. Lastly, sampling without replacement but from a large population and we discussed this in class if the population is really large then it really doesn't matter um, if you remove one member it's not going to change the probability so online survey finds that 60 percent of people are in favor of certain certain proposal if five of the people polled are selected again at random what's the probability the majority of them are against the proposal so what does majority mean i'll give you a chance to formulate that in your head and figure out um, how you're going to start that and then i'll go through the solutions Okay, so again, I'm going to start with defining my success as, in this case, I'm going to go maybe with against proposal and failure for proposal. Um, let's highlight the information 60% are in favor, five people polled, probability that majority of them are against. Okay, so if failure is for the proposal, that's 0 0.6, while against is 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 is our 
and 0.6 is our Q. Majority means more than half. So if I've got five people, and that means I want five people, four people, or three people to be against. So I'm looking for probability of greater than or equal to three to be against. So I could do one minus zero, one, two, or I can do just three, four, five. It ends up being probably less work to just do three, four, five. So from five people, I'm choosing three to be against. So that would be P to the three Q to the two plus five choose four to be against or five to be against and then we substitute our numbers now um, off the top of my head can I work out five choose three is it ten maybe uh, I don't have a calculator handy I'm sure you can work it out but I think it's ten Okay, yeah. 10 .4 to the 3.6 to the 2 plus 5.4 to the 6. Okay, so hopefully you get the picture. Now there are can be much more complicated questions but i leave that for later i hope that's enough examples to get you going and hopefully you get the picture of how to do these questions and um, that took about half an hour of explaining and that should give you enough time to have a go at these exercises uh, good luck and hopefully i'll be there on tuesday to help with any ambiguities or problems that have arisen Thanks.